Our guest tonight is Olympic gold medalist and TNA star Kurt Angle. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Well, TNA has been making major headlines with the move of Impact Wrestling to Pop TV and a new set of tapings at the Sands Casino in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. What do you think of Impact's move to Pop TV, and who do you think will win the World Title Series in Bethlehem? Well, um, you know, it's this is all new territory for us, uh, getting into another network. Um, this will be the third in three years, so, uh, you know, hopefully uh, we just want to make sure that it works out and that it does something both long-term for both companies. But in essence, you know, this is a new network. We're excited, obviously, and... We just want to, I just want to sit back and see how it goes. Now, what about the World Title Series? Uh, it's going to conclude in Bethlehem. As someone who's looking at it from the outside, looking in, uh, fighting for that world title, uh, who do you think has the inside lane to take it home? I think it would be Bobby Lashley. He just, uh, you know, as far as a pro wrestler or any fighter, he's just uh, he's a beast. And uh, he has uh, just a little bit, better everything than anybody else. He's a super athlete. So I always pick him to be the favorite. Well, you recently announced your retirement from from Impact Wrestling following the company's tour in the United Kingdom this January. What went into your decision, and why do you feel like now was the right time to step away? Uh, it was just the best time for me to step away. Um, you know, being able to be at home a lot more this past year, just... Uh, you know, other things got more important to me. You know, it was family. So, um, you know, uh, having that, just uh, I thought that uh, it was a it was a good move on both parts, and uh, I think we were both comfortable with each other. Mike Yari? Well, you've uh, pretty much seen and done it all uh, over the course of your career. But is there anything uh, that you still want to accomplish as a professional wrestler, or is there maybe any regrets or anything that you would have done differently uh, in your career? Um, as far as my wrestling career, no. I, I did everything I wanted to, and, uh, you know, it's been a fun ride. Um, I didn't know uh, how good I was going to become or, you know, uh, what kind of status I would get. It didn't really matter to me. I just enjoyed it, and uh, it's been it's been a fun ride. And uh, I don't I don't have any regrets. It was, it's as good as it could have gone. Brandon Galvin, you've had one of the greatest careers of any pro wrestler. But one point in your career, I feel, gets overlooked is when you were first starting out. And I was a huge fan of the work you did with Taz, Chris Jericho, and Bob Backlund, to name a few. I still think it was S.A. Rios that ran down Stone Cold. When you were first starting out, do you recall thinking or knowing you would be able to nail that aspect of being a pro wrestler, that entertainment aspect? No, and, um, you know, it wasn't like I was being trained to uh, to become that, you know, super pro wrestler. Um, I didn't really go over promos, didn't really practice. It's just one of those things that I believe you either have it or you don't. And if you have it, um, you know, you're going to be able to, do that more often and be more of a character driven wrestler than an actual wrestler wrestler. But, um, you know, when you have that, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a positive. And, uh, anybody, you know, pro wrestling is real difficult, but anybody that knows how to be a decent pro wrestler, they get that other aspect of uh, wrestling, uh, the promo skills and stuff. They're going to, they're going to go really far with that athletic ability. Well, switching gears a little bit here, uh, you have confirmed in past interviews that there were discussions between you and WWE about a possible return, but things fell through. Uh, what do you think? Uh, what What do you think the two parties couldn't come to an agreement on? And uh, in the future, after you've been retired for a little bit, do you think there's a there's a part time run in WWE there if you decided to want to go there? Oh, uh, um, well, I mean, right now uh, I'm not thinking that far into it. Um, you know, if, if I feel good after I take my time off and I feel good, uh, I might want to continue wrestling. That's why I didn't want to say I was going to ultimately retire for good. Um, it was just my last matches that I had under contract with TNA. And, uh, you know, it's, it's more of a TNA retirement, um, uh, you know, thing than it is uh, anything else. But um, it's, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm enjoying everything in body right now. Mike Yuri? 
Uh, well, during your recent Q and A tour, uh, you mentioned potentially uh, competing at WrestleMania 33. But are you optimistic uh, that another WrestleMania match is a legitimate possibility at this point? Do you think that there's any chance that could come to fruition? Uh, I don't know. Um, you know, it all depends on how both sides feel about the situation. Um, you know, I think uh, you know. Uh, is there a possibility that there will be a meeting in the future? Yeah. You know, I'm not counting that out. So, um, you know, I think anybody in pro wrestling wouldn't mind their last match being at WrestleMania. So, you know, it all makes sense. Well, a lot of former uh, TNA talents turned up in NXT as of late, uh, such as Samoa Joe and James Storm. Um, If there's no interest on WWE's part for, like, a main roster run or for a WrestleMania appearance, but they offered you a spot in NXT. Um, how would you react to that? Is that something that would interest you at all? Um, no. Uh, with all due respect, I mean, I, the talent on the NXT roster is phenomenal. So they, they, they're doing something right down there uh, as far as getting talent ready. Uh, I just don't think, um, I don't think it's worth it to either side to, you know, have uh, me go in and, and, uh, work on the NXT, and not that I I wouldn't enjoy it, I'd enjoy it very much, but uh, that's, you know, right? I mean, it, no matter how you slice it, no matter how way you look at it, it is considered a WWE minor league, so um, you know, with that in mind, you know, I think anybody would feel the same way. BG? If you're not brought back for WrestleMania 33 or another run in general, do you think there will be a void left in your career by not coming back full circle? No, absolutely not. I uh, I enjoy it all of it. WWE, TNA, uh, even uh, 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 stuff over in Japan I did quite a bit for, for a couple of years. Uh, no, I enjoy it. I enjoy every aspect of it. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's just the way the cards fell and, uh, you know, uh, what I've been in the WWE up to this day, depending on, you know, you know, the situation I need to get out for my own health. So I got out and, uh, I don't regret it because I've had a really a lot of fun in TNA as well. Both companies have been great to me. Mike, you final round of questions. Uh, Daniel Bryan, uh, is a guy who you've mentioned wanting to work with, uh, before your career officially comes to a close. Um, for you, why is that such an attractive matchup and who are maybe some others that you wouldn't mind competing with, uh, before it's all said and done? Well, Daniel, uh, he has the, the rare, uh, you know, the rare gift of not just being an incredible wrestler and an incredible underdog, but, um, uh, fans clung to him very quickly. So, yes, it's all about the wrestling ability. He is the absolute best today. Um, I believe that. But um, it's, you know, it's what he brings to the table. And that's a lot of, a lot of fans. And that, that's the kind of match you want. You know, you want a match that's going to draw a lot of interest, get a lot of excitement, and, you know, make the fans pick one way or another. I believe that's what that's a match that works. BG, final question? Well, you've already had one of my personal dream matches, and that was your, your rivalry with AJ Styles, and Daniel Bryan is certainly another dream match for many of today's wrestling fans. But my ultimate dream match for you would have been to see you go up against Bret Hart. Is there somebody in history you've never wrestled but wish you could? Yeah, and you, you said his name. Um, we were so close, and uh, we even talked about Bret returning. Uh, this is when I was in WWE. And uh, unfortunately, we just we just couldn't do it because, you know, I understood why Brett, you know, I think the following year took a match against Vince McMahon at WrestleMania. And I was a little bit offended, but, you know, when I talked to him, he said, Kurt, I didn't wrestle Vince that night. If I can't put on the Bret Hart performance that I know I can, if I can't do that anymore, I can't do it. And uh, I respected his decision for not wanting to. So it, it made me understand you know, this guy's been through hell with the head injury and then the obviously the stroke and uh he just uh just you know, he just can't do it anymore the way he, he would like to do it. If he can't do it at that level, that Bret Hart level, uh he's not going to. Oh, a huge thank you to Kurt Angle for coming on the show. Tell the fans where they can support you on social media and anywhere else, sir. 
Yeah, follow me at Real Kurt Angle uh, on Twitter, and uh, it's the Real Kurt Angle on Instagram. And uh, thank you so much for your time. I love fun answering your questions. Thank you very much, sir.